Today we're going to be giving a quick rundown of some of the really cool features that are going to be available in iOS 8. Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric from AppFind here, and today I'm going to be showing you some really cool new features that are going to be present in iOS 8, which was just unveiled at the WWDC 2014 in San Francisco. So they just ended the conference portion where they talked about iOS 8 and showcased some of those really cool features. So we're going to be discussing those, and as you guys know, uh, iOS 8 will probably be coming around sometime in the fall. Uh, but we wanted to showcase some of these features now to get you guys really excited. And uh, definitely let me know in the comments section below what your favorite features are, what else you want to see, uh, and how you like iOS 8, what it looks like so far. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started. Now, as you can see right here, we have the icon of iOS 8, and I think it's a nice, sleek, clean style icon like they started uh, with iOS 7. As you can see, they're continuing that trend into iOS 8, which has a lot of improvements on iOS 7, but it's not that big of a radical change that 6 to 7 was. Now, if you take a look here, as you can see, a really cool new feature that they added that I think they um, were a little bit late in adding, but it's absolutely amazing, it's genius, is the fact that you can actually be able to respond uh, uh, to any text message without leaving the page that you're on. As you can see, you can just type a quick response right there when it's scrolled down in the little notification box, and you can just type a quick response to anybody who's sending you a text message. I think that's a really great feature, and uh, that's something maybe they should have had a while ago, but at least they have it now uh, in iOS 8. It's going to be an excellent feature to utilize because switching back and forth between Safari and messages or if you're playing a game and messages, just being able to utilize it right there on any screen is definitely going to be a big plus for iOS 8 overall. Now the next thing that we have here is the ability to see some more things when you go into multitasking. As you can see, you can see recents of your calls, FaceTime, etc. right up at the top in addition to all of the different applications. Now that's a great way to utilize the blank space that they originally had uh, and created with iOS 7 in the multitasking menu and utilizing it for a function that you can e be able to instantly call people that re you recently called or FaceTime people you recently FaceTimed. I definitely think that's a great feature and the the fact that it's available right from the multitasking screen is a very logical step, uh, definitely in iOS 8. Now, as you can see here, another really cool feature is the ability to have the new quick type options. Now, what this is going to let you do is be able to instantly select a word that you already started typing, maybe you type it a lot before, right from the top, right above the keyboard. And that way you can type a lot quicker, but it's not going to be this weird suggestion that pops up in a little bubble that you either have to tap or hit enter or space or whatever. Basically, it pops right up right above the keyboard. You'll be able to instantly tap it. And I think that that's a really great feature. There's not just one, but there's three different results that it can, it can pop up with. That way, any other words that you might have typed before or you can just click it instantly and it can really help you with your quick typing uh, when you need to do that. Now the next thing that we have is the ability to add an audio message to all of your messages instead of maybe just typing it or sending a video clip with an audio message attached. You're just able to send just the audio message to people right in the Messages app. That's definitely a really cool new feature uh, and I love to see it right here integrated right into the Messages app. Now the next thing that it has is the ability to keep or not keep different audio files and videos that you get sent. Now this does not have to do with the pictures, just the audio files or videos. And basically what that's going to let you do is if you have a lot of audio files and videos that you don't necessarily need to keep but you don't want to have to go into like edit, delete, uh, basically what it'll do is automatically delete them after a period of time for you if you don't choose to keep it, if you don't hit that little keep button. Obviously, your pictures will still stay there, but it is the audio and video options that you're going to have to press keep in order to keep them. Now, the next thing that they've integrated is a lot of different health options right into iOS 8, a whole new uh, health app that connects with a bunch of different health apps that you might have, third-party apps, but it serves as a little bit of a hub for all of your health applications and uh, basically nutrition, sleep, and exercise all in one central iOS app location. So as you can see here, you can take a look at a dashboard which will have your calories burned, sleep, heart rate, 
all of the different components to your health, uh, including eating, sleeping, and exercising, can all be seen from this one dashboard, but it's not just iOS components that, or iOS built native components that are gonna be a part of this, it'll also have connections to your Nike fuel, bl fuel band, uh, your sleep timer, anything that has a third party application that wants to send data to the uh, iOS health app can, and you'll be able to see it all in that one dashboard, which is another really amazing feature of centralizing everything into that one uh, space on your iPhone. Now the next thing that we have here is the family sharing option. And what this is gonna let you do is be able to share uh, different music, movies, apps, books, uh, photos, videos, etc., with family members. And that way you can have more of a centralized uh, family option for all the different content that you have. Uh, you don't have to individually sync everything. It'll all automatically sync using those family sharing options, uh, which you can accept the invitation to. I think that's a pretty good method. I'd like to see a little bit more uh, settings. Obviously, we won't know until it comes out, but you know, some things you might wanna share, some things you might not. Right now, it's all blanket. You're gonna share all these different things, um, but I'd like to see some settings when it does come out to pick and choose what you wanna share specifically. Now, the next thing that we have kinda linked to that is the ability for um, younger children accounts to ask permission to purchase um, different applications, in-app purchases, etc. And I think this was needed for a long time on the App Store. I think it's absolutely amazing that they're uh, adding this. I actually didn't uh, think that this was going to be something that they were going to add this time around, but they did. So as you can see here, you can ask permission uh, to a parent to be able to purchase an item, whether it be a new app, in-app purchase. You have to ask, and then they have to accept that um, request for you to be able to buy that application. I think that's a great feature. You know, that way you don't have to worry about letting your kids have an iPad or an iPhone that might have a iTunes account linked to it. You just have to have it a kid's account and you can link multiple accounts to the same credit card and you just have to set it up as a kid's account. And I think that that's a great feature overall. This video is brought to you by AppNana, the cool app that lets you get paid apps, iTunes gift cards, and more absolutely free. Go to AppNana.com slash AppFind in your mobile browser to get started. Now what you're going to do is just log in and create an account. From there, you'll receive 10,000 Nanas for using our unique URL. You can use points to get all of these cool apps, Amazon gift cards, iTunes gift cards, PayPal cash, uh, and a lot more. There's a lot of great rewards all available on AppNana. Now the way to get more points is just to download regular apps that are absolutely free. Once you download the apps like Hotels.com, you'll be rewarded with free points. We just got 3,900 points just for downloading uh, Hotels.com. For even more points, use my referral code A4458 Five eight five nine. Use that exact referral code to get you 2,500 more Nanas. You can use Nanas for all of these amazing apps. So what are you waiting for? Sign up today. Also click here to watch the full app Nana tutorial. Now the next thing that we have is a new um, tiered system for the cloud services that's gonna be a pay per month for cloud storage. So the first five gigabytes is free is per standard. But after that 20 gigabytes is 99 cents a month, 200 gigabytes is 399 a month, and they go all the way up to one terabyte. And those are actually pretty low prices for the amount of gigabytes offered. Now, obviously, places like Mega um, and all that other stuff will provide a little bit more uh, for obviously a lower cost. However, the ability to have it all seamlessly integrated right into iOS, I think is absolutely amazing with the iCloud. And I think it could be worth that price, definitely. Now, the next thing we have is Shazam built right into uh, iOS and Siri. As you can see, you just have to say, hey, Siri, and then it'll add Shazam song recognition, uh, and you can buy the iTunes content. I think this was a great logical step. This is what we hoped Siri would have when back when it was introduced a couple years ago, and it's finally coming with Shazam integration, which was obviously the next logical step, and I, I, I just can't wait to give it a try uh, to be able just to recognize songs just by turn on Siri. Now the next thing uh, that we had is just a little boast from uh, Tim Cook obviously right here is the fact that we have 1.2 million 
apps available on the App Store. And that's a lot of applications, but let me remind you at that point that that's why you guys watch App Spotlight and all these different shows right here on App Find to be able to find the best applications uh, out of those 1.2 million because obviously it's a lot to sift through, so you might as well let us do that for you. That's my little plug uh, right there. All right, on to the next bit. Another really cool feature that I am looking forward to a lot is app bundles. I think this is absolutely amazing. This is great. Um, as you can see, you can bundle multiple applications for a lower price together to be able to purchase all those applications in one easy fee. And they'll all download as separate applications, not like one multi-app. It's going to be separate applications, but you pay one lower price. It's like an album for music. I think this is amazing. This is the next logical step in the App Store. And I'd love to see other... Um, you know, bundles, not necessarily between that one developer, but also creating a bundle like cross-developer, developers working together. Currently, that's not available yet, but I'd love to see Apple introduce that as well. But currently, you're going to be able to get just bundles from one developer, which I still think is a great feature. As you can see, they got the Toka toy box, and uh, you can get all those apps in one box for one lower price. So I think that there's a lot of great things that can be done with these app bundles, and I cannot wait to see it. So the next thing that we have is a couple of new features in the app stores to be able to discover apps with Explore. You can improve the app store search. So basically it's going to be uh, that improved search. Remember when they acquired Chomp a while ago and we didn't really see any changes? Well, now they're going to be changing it finally after a few years uh, to add a lot better search engine in there. But obviously there's still 1.2 million apps. So there's still a need for uh, us guys on here that are reviewing the apps like AppFind and all that stuff. So obviously we already talked about app bundles. App previews and test flight are two new features um, that we can expand upon a little bit later, but I'd like to see those as well. Basically, test flight's like a beta testing thing as well. So now the next component of iOS 8 that is here is uh, the ability to add widgets to your notification center, which I think is amazing. Uh, I was wondering why they didn't come out with this when notification center first came out. But I think that it's great that they're adding it now. As you can see, you can have third-party widgets, um, and they're showing the example of Sports Center, which is obviously a logical widget to have. Uh, if you're really into sports, you can pick your favorite teams. You can see uh, what the scores are for those teams. Um, and then all you have to do is, with a tap of a button, it can take you right to the Sports Center app and show you the full data that you need. I think that's a great feature. Just as long as those um, you know, widgets don't have any ability to come up with an advertisement, as long as they're just widgets on there. But I think right now it looks like they're just the widgets. So now the next thing that we have is um, the ability to have a swipe like function for keyboard. Obviously, it's not going to be swipe itself because that's patented by Android and all that stuff. But it looks like a cool swipe style feature that they're going to be incorporating as well. And I can't wait to give it a try. Now the next thing that we have is the ability to use Touch ID for third party applications. Their example is Mint, uh, which allows you to track all your bank records and all that stuff, personal financing application. And I think that's a great example. I'd love to personally see it for one password and um, one safe because those will let you store all your passwords with the touch of the Touch ID. And I think that's going to be a great uh, way to utilize, instead of having to remember the one password, all you got to do is keep your thumb with you. And uh, then you have all your passwords right at the thumbprint. Um, but I think that's just amazing. They'll be able to incorporate that into more applications. Uh, and I think that that was obviously the next logical step for Touch ID to take. Now, one of the final things that we have is the ability to uh, integrate all of your different um home products such as those new Philip lights that are coming out um, and all those different products that are going to be able to incorporate straight with the iPhone in the home kit. Now the home kit's going to allow you to have Siri integration, group devices, uh, you're going to control different devices um, and the pairing is very secure but as you can see it'll help you locks, lights, cameras, doors, thermostats, plugs and switches and I think that's really cool. However, we want to get those um, the prices of some of those locks, lights, etc. down a little bit more uh, before I'd personally be buying them. But I still think that that's a great feature to incorporate right into the iPhone as well. 
So those are all the features that I wanted to show you guys today about iOS 8. Uh, obviously, there are some more. If you want to check out Mac Rumors, which was where a lot of our images come from, um, because obviously they're there. They live covered the event. You can check them out for the other live coverage. But anyways, guys, that was basically all of the different major things about iOS 8. Let me know what you think about iOS 8 in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe. We'll keep you guys updated with everything you need to know about iOS 8, all that cool stuff. And also, be sure to watch App Spotlight on the weekends uh, for the best applications. Uh, once again, I'm Alfred from AppFine, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.